Thanks very much for joining my animation channel. Today we're going to be looking at how I animated this character, how I rigged him and animated him using open tunes. He's in my the paint on Safari movie, he's the main character. And most of the animals in this movie I'll be animating frame by frame. But when it comes to this character and all the other human characters, they'll all be animated as puppets. So this is what we'll cover in this tutorial today. The scene that I'm animating here, the characters just walks left to right and he does a turn and then he walks right to left back along the road. And that's the bit we'll be covering. The first part is on parenting using the schematic. First of all, pull up the schematic. All the body parts of this character are on separate levels and separate columns. So what we're going to do here on the schematic is just parent those body parts to the main body. So we just link all the outputs to the inputs of the body. And then when we move that body, all the body, we can see all the body parts are attached to it. Next thing we do is move the centers of each body body part, the hand, the arm, the legs, etc. We we position the centers of these parts. The second thing we do is we apply the mesh. So we go and select a body part. We go down to the bottom left, we grab the plastic tool. Then we go up to the top left and there's a button create mesh. You hit that and it will create a mesh. You hit apply, it'll apply it to that body part and there's your mesh. It opens up a new column for the mesh next to the body part applied to and in purple. And we will run through the whole body applying mesh to it. Next thing we do is a rigging where we apply skeleton to this mesh. We start with the root and then we apply vert vertexes off that. Uh, we're starting here with the main body and run the joints, run the kneecap and run the foot. We'll be putting a few extra joints so that we can control the bending in those areas. So again, we just go through all the body parts, applying the skeleton. Sometimes it's best to go to turn off the um, layer in front of it so that you can see the body part behind it, like the arm. And we also put a skeleton on the ladder because that will also be moving. Then we can extend the area of our animation. That's pretty straightforward. Just go down to where you want it to stop and go full cells or you can drag each column down or grab them and drag them down. And the next part is the actual animating and I'm putting in using templates here because I have created a walk cycle course which you can go and have a look at. It comes with templates. There are sets of templates in the course. Just scroll down to the template section and then scroll down to the template that you want. Here we're selecting walk B, the glide. You can play it on the video. We're going to get the right to left zip file, download it. In the bottom left, you, you'll see it downloading. Take all the downloaded files, grab them, copy them and drop them into your project file. And then go to your open tunes, right click, go load level and go to where you've saved these templates and 
it will drop them in. It drops them into separate columns. You have to go and gather them and put them all into one column. There's 24 of them, put them in one column. And then you can play it out. And you'll see that the walk cycle here, all the walk cycles walk around a single point. To lay out the templates, use the animate tool go up to the position and you can move them here we are setting up the start of the walk so we can go and grab the last few templates on the column and paste them in at the beginning to go and set up the start of the walk because he's starting from standing still and we set that up with keys which are mainly on the horizontal here and you can use your onion skin to to make sure that the feet aren't sliding and set set up the templates so that they they walk off to the left you can do this with the whole set they don't come set up like this positioned around a stationary point so you do have to set them up but once you've got them set up they are as i said very straightforward now what we're going to do is we're going to put in a round line so i'm adding a vector column here and putting in a line and adjusting it to the bottom of the, the character. We also adjust the transparency of the templates. I've put them in front of the character, so you want to be able to see through it to see the body. Now here I've gone and animated the templates in a walk cycle, and I've collapsed it into a subsheet, which is why this column here is purple. And that's a, another lesson for another day we're not going to cover sub sub sheets but they are very handy because once you've collapsed it you can animate a very complex movement as one column so it's very handy to learn how to do but that's where the templates are now and what we're going to do is to grab the body of the main character because everything has been parented off the body and we are going to just control at this stage the x and y the position of that character so i'm doing it every quarter this whole walk cycle is in 24 frames so it's basically every six frame there's there's a quarter i like to set up a a key on every every six frame because that that's where you'll have the contact the pass etc on the on the on the walk cycle so that's the very first thing we do is we to set up the horizontal so that the characters is moving in time with the templates in the background. The next step is actually animating the skeleton of the mesh. So we go back to the plastic tool at the bottom left. We select it and then there's the skeleton and this time we go to the animate part of the skeleton and we can go and animate it in the top right there there's a button click there keep distance and you can click that on and off um, as it's set it will keep the distance between the nodes which is pretty much how i want to animate most things especially a skeleton because you don't want much movement between the nodes and then we basically go from quarter to quarter tracing off the template that we've put down we're doing the left leg first here and we basically go and trace it this is where the templates are very very handy because this usually would take me hours to set up and i think this whole thing from the get-go importing the templates to finish took less than an hour the big benefit of doing it this way using templates is you know what you're going to get at the end because you can play those templates out and see the walk before you animate it. So it's it's very handy. Um, this is why I created them. They're on my course and they really do help speed up your workload. So now we've got the guy walking and we are going to take away some of the body parts in the front so we can see what's happening at the back and we are animating the back arm that's carrying the paint can again we just follow the template at the back the template for this character is leaning back a bit uh, so it's not perfect he's also got a bobbing head so we don't have to trace them exactly off it but definitely every quarter that we put down a key it's helping keep the rhythm for that that move we do that again with the 
forward arm, the closest arm, the, the left arm. We do the ladder. We've got the root of the ladder on the hand of the character because we want it to stay connected to the hand, which can make it bend a bit. And then we play it out and you can see the template at the back with the guy's head wobbling around. We haven't got that. Our character is pretty stable and in fact he's a little bit too stable. We want him to have a bit of an up and down move which that template didn't have much of. So we're going to go and add that. We've dropped in another horizontal line and we want him to go up on the on the pass which is the highest point of this, the walk cycle. And then we want them to go down on the contact, which is the lowest lowest part. So we're adding some vertical movement to the character. And you can see here on the on the X sheet to the right, we're actually adding an extra keys. So it's no longer every quarter that we have a key on, on the body. And we're getting that nice rocking movement with a with a nice up and down. It it just gives more life to the character. Otherwise he can seem a little bit robotic and flat. And you can go in and tweak these little little moves towards the end of the animating. And then playing this out, I picked up that his back arm, in fact his front arm is, is slightly out of line. So here we go back to the plastic tool and instead of animate we're going back to the bull skeleton and this is where open tunes is pretty cool. You can go and change that skeleton we're going to go and add a node there and it does change the whole setup of the animation key so we have to go and adjust that so we go through and adjust it on every key that we set it's a slight tweak and we're just trying to bring that shoulder up so that that line there is in line with his arm and that's that's him fixed up there okay So now what we're going to do is just finish up. Our guy's pretty much rigged, he is animated. So we go back to the beginning. This walk I actually didn't do this way, I did this more freehand and, and quite honestly it shows. There's our turn and at the end of the turn a walk back character will come in. Again on the right you'll see that column is purple, I've gone and collapsed this whole animation we've just done into a subset. Again, that's a uh, tutorial for another day, but very, very handy to learn how to use these things. Because what we will do, I'll show you now, is that walk cycle that we've done is just one walk cycle. But by using the subset, we can go and just copy it and paste it and, and, and extend it, which we'll do now. So there's our character against a bit of background so we can see his position. And I'm going to find the beginning of the walk cycle, go and copy it and paste it. Again, this is in a subset, so it's copied all those keys and all the animating that we've just done is set in or collapsed into that subset. And at the end of that one cycle, we will put a key just to just to anchor it and then put our onion skins on and we will be able to find the beginning of the next cycle. So you can do this for as long as you want this guy to walk, just cycle by cycle, just join them together like that. And then we, when we run it through, there it is. So we've actually got two cycles there joined together. So it really is pretty straightforward, not complicated at all. Um, the first time is a little bit difficult, the second time is easier, but when you've done this a few times, it really, really does get easy. And as I say, I use the templates. They really, really speed up my walks. So what we're going to do here is just get it ready for rendering. We're bringing our background back in, and then it's ready to render. He has a scene rendered with a shadow in it. So if you want access to the templates, go check out the Walk Cycle course. Also check out the Making a Short Animated Movie course, which the scene comes from. You can get there by going via the links in the description here. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. 
And if you want to, then also subscribe to my email list by just filling that in as well. All the links are in the description here. So thanks very much for joining me and I hope this will help you getting your characters walking.